Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion talking about Tropical Storm Arthur, the first named storm of the 2020 hurricane season. Probably a lot more to go from here. Interesting, trivial tidbit for you. Uh, six years ago, I was in another iteration of Arthur. The National Hurricane Center uses a list of 21 names. There are six lists. Those lists get recycled unless a storm is particularly notable, like Katrina or Andrew as examples. Those get retired off that list and replaced with new names. Well, Arthur uh, was used last six years ago, and I was in the I, I as in capital I, was in the I-E-Y-E of Hurricane Arthur at the time over the Oregon Inlet uh, along the North Carolina Outer Banks on Independence Day 2014. Oregon Inlet itself created because of a hurricane in 1846. So there's your trivia for today. All right, so this iteration of Arthur, the latest version, the 2020 version, right now top winds are about 45 miles per hour. This is the National Hurricane Center information, the key messages. No storm surge watches or warnings in effect right now. Uh, but coastal conditions are kind of, you know, unpleasant, dangerous coastal surf conditions and rip currents along the southeast coast and mid-Atlantic states over the next, next couple of days. This is a big wind machine. It doesn't take a hurricane to cause problems. We talk about this often. We do not want to ignore the fact that it's out there and it could cause some issues. It's not a major problem. It's not a high impact. Everybody head for the hills. Look out. The sky is falling. No, 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 no. We keep this in perspective, but it is a tropical storm. It's going to affect these coastal areas. And just how close it ends up actually tracking to the North Carolina Outer Banks here will be really interesting. Does it come up over the Pamlico Sound uh, to the west of Hatteras like this? Or is it closer to the center line if we drew it in there? of the National Hurricane Center forecast track. It just depends on which model guidance you look at. The U.S.-based models, generally speaking, the GFS and the HWARF are a little bit farther to the west, whereas the European and its ensembles, etc., generally speaking, are a little bit more to the east. But that makes a big difference in terms of impact, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. I was going to show you the vorticity signature. We've been following this for several days, but alas, no data available. Bummer. Some problem over at the University of Wisconsin site. And I'll show you. Here's the page that I get it from. I refresh the page. Nothing there. Nothing. Wind shear. It's all, it's missing. So, oh well. Uh, but there it is. That's what it looks like, actually. There we go. Um, it's fairly well organized for May 17th. I mean, look at that band right there. That's a very solid band. There's another one trying to develop here. The only thing holding this back from ramping up very quickly uh, to hurricane intensity is the fact that it's May and it's got climatology going against it. You typically don't see hurricanes in May. That's why hurricane season, hurricane season, right? Doesn't typically, well, it doesn't start period until June. Uh, but the warm water temperatures, just they're not there, not on a wide scale. There's not a plethora, an abundance of upper ocean heat content, and thus lots and lots of latent heat for this to tap into. Now, that being said, there is enough energy and moisture out there for this to take advantage of. I'll show you that in a moment. You can see this onshore flow here in the southeast part of North Carolina, down into South Carolina. It's muggy outside. I was loading up my vehicle to get ready to go to the Outer Banks, and it's muggy. I'm not complaining, though. I like muggy. Muggy's good. I like it anyway. I like winter storms, too, but that season is over. Now it's hurricane season. Well, almost, anyway. At least nature says so. And this is starting to try to get better organized. And like I said, the only thing really holding it back is the lack of real upper ocean heat content energy. Now, it's not difficult at all to spot the center. It's right in there. And sometimes it gets pulled to the northeast, and then sometimes it comes back to the west a little bit. It's going to kind of zigzag along on a general north to northeast heading up here, north-northeast to northeast heading. Uh, 
approaching the Capes of North Carolina. Cape Lookout, Cape Hatteras, uh, down here, Cape Fear, the Wilmington area, uh, to Myrtle Beach and beyond. No issues at all directly associated with this, but it is generating wind out here, and that energy is getting translated into the water, and that comes to the shoreline as breakers and swells, and it creates rough surf conditions, rip currents, especially near the times of low tide. I urge you to be very, very careful out there. No lives lost because of rip currents. Come on, we can do better. That is a 100% per, uh, preventable. I'm trying to say two words at once, and you can't do that. Um, that is a preventable situation. We don't need that loss of life, obviously, and it's 100% preventable, all right? So please be careful. Now, one thing I want to show you, the sea surface temperature anomalies, this is where this starts to matter. We monitor this a lot on the bigger scale to figure out what an overall season might be like, but what about when something comes along? Well, look right in here. This is our area of interest, and Arthur is going to try to follow this warm uh, area right up here, the Gulf Stream, and in fact, let me just keep on zooming in, and we'll scroll over, and it's going to find, it looks like this little sweet spot right up here, where sea surface temperatures are running several degrees uh, Fahrenheit above the long-term average. I say several, at eh, two to three degrees warmer, and um, that's enough. That's a, that's a boost of energy that this will take advantage of. That Gulf Stream is also moving underneath the circulation, so there's a constant supply of warm water. The actual sea surface temperatures here, there is your 26 Celsius isotherm right there, which is about 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 27 Celsius, a little warmer here, a little warmer pool right there. Bottom line, it's going to enter an area uh, up through here where, hey, the dog's chiming in, where it will have warmer water temperatures to work with um, and so it might try to strengthen as it approaches the coast and that is very evident in the GFS this is the latest from today the, the 12z run courtesy of tropical tidbits uh, this is the hour six so this would be you know basically this afternoon a couple hours from right now there is Arthur right there GFS analyzing a pressure here of or forecasting a pressure of a thousand millibars Move it out six hours, 997. Yeah, that's getting there. Uh, 18 hours out, so 2 a.m. down to 991, starting to, and it's right over that warm water, you know, that Gulf Stream, if the GFS is correct. Uh, and then by 8 a.m. tomorrow, as it approaches the coast there of the Outer Banks, still about 991, but then it drops to about 987, it looks like and has a heck of a precip shield on the west side you know is this right is this what's going to happen what i think is fascinating is we're going to see you know i'm going to be there in person i'll be able to show you and talk about it and uh, do reports and whatnot and then it goes on to eventually slide on off uh, baroclinic processes and extra tropical transition takes over it's over much colder water up here but boy oh boy that approach there to the North Carolina Outer Banks, this corridor right here, that's where it's going to really, really matter where the center tracks in terms of what the effects are for the Outer Banks, which just opened this weekend to the general public, visitors, uh, because of restrictions related to the COVID-19 pandemic. I just can't believe I'm talking about that in these updates, but here we are. Anyhow, the National Weather Service, Moorhead, Newport area, great information here, what to expect, potential for some damage, you know, nothing um, we can't handle unless you don't use common sense. And if you don't use common sense, then you invite trouble. Um, maybe close to hurricane force gusts down here along the southern portions of the Outer Banks, where I'm going to be, elsewhere. 50s to 60, maybe 65 at worst, but that's really going to be in these exposed areas and any rain bands that are particularly intense. Um, and it's just going to be kind of breezy overall. A few areas where the water levels will rise, but 
again, nothing, there's not even a storm surge watch or warning in, in effect right now. Uh, the impacts here, again, from National Weather Service, Moorhead City, um, overall, just low impact for the most part. But if a tree falls in your house, your mobile home, your car, that's pretty high impact, and we cannot pinpoint that. So just be mindful, all right? I'm not hyping this up any more than it is, but it's there, and you should be aware of it. Do not take it for granted. Oh, it's just a tropical storm. It's May. Who cares? Well, I promise you, some people will care who have damage and who have issues. Power outages, you know, um, you lose your internet for several hours or a day or two. In this day and age, right now, with all that's going on, you don't want to lose that, and that becomes an issue. Maybe you can't work. Maybe you can't do your distance learning for your kids, you know, because we're dealing with that. This is where the intersection of the COVID-19 crisis and tropical events matter because it's more than just, <laughs> it's just a tropical storm. Who cares? Why are you even talking about it? It matters more now than ever before because we rely on all these you know, creature comforts, the internet, the power grid, the ability to go places. Some places are just opening up. People are nervous. They're, you know, it's just a different time. And so we have to take this into consideration, keep it in the proper perspective. And that's what I'm trying to do here. The impacts, generally speaking, are not going to be that big of a deal. Absolutely not. But in some cases they could be. And since I don't know where those individual locations and exact locations are going to be, I'm just trying to make you aware of the big picture overall. Speaking of big picture, here's a look at the national scene. We won't worry about all of this stuff right now, low of 48 weather until tomorrow when I do a much longer update. Here are your tropical storm warning areas for coastal right there and your marine interest offshore. Um, we'll see what happens as this progresses. But speaking of that, I'll be able to tell you what happens. I'm going to journey here from home, Wilmington, up through Jacksonville, New Bern, make my way out to Nags Head, and I'm going to plop a camera system out here. I'm going to stick one down in Rodanthe, and then another one down here in the Buxton area. And I do this because it's my job. And, you know, and it's not like, oh, i got to clock in and go do this. I mean, you know me by now. This is what I live for. And, yes, it is a big deal. Every storm, to me, matters. I'm going to cover it. I'm going to report on it. I'm going to learn from it. Every single time I go out, every one of them, I learn something, something that helps me better prepared for the future. All right? Now, I know this is a stretch. Everybody's been enjoying that Michael Jordan documentary, and I'm not trying to sound too magnanimous here, but I think you understand where I'm going. Michael Jordan didn't become Michael Jordan by being lazy. You understand? I'm not going to sit at home and be lazy when this is just five hours away and... It's my job, right? And I enjoy it. I enjoy being able to show you what's going on and give you the facts. And if there's a surprise, maybe it ramps up. Who knows? We don't know everything. That's why I do this, or at least part of the reason. So I'll be out here, like I said, setting up a camera system up in Nags Head, Rodanthe, and then down here in the Buxton area. I am mainly concerned that if the center cuts across Pamlico Sound before exiting, you know, on any kind of a trajectory like that, you know, even a clip of the Cape itself, that the flow, especially if it's starting to ramp up, off the Pamlico Sound over here could drive in a few feet of surge. It's not likely, but I'm not going to miss it if it does. Uh, and I'll be out here, I'll have uh, weather station information from the house that I'll be staying in in Rodanthe. It's one of our crowdfunding partners. And good friend of mine, the family house that they let me stay in in Rodanthe, it's my own personal hurricane lab, and it's very nice. I don't have to worry about a hotel room, and I'm in the area that I need to be, as long as I don't get stuck again like I did last year after that coastal storm. So I'll have to be a little bit, I don't know, I might go north of Pea Island Visitor Center as it all gets crazy tomorrow. We'll just wait and see. I don't want to get stuck out there while I wait for the DOT to... Clear the roads. That's that's. I got a lot of work to do. A lot of stuff going on. All right, real quick, the tracking maps. Uh, I want to keep promoting these until they're all gone. I'll put a link in the description of today's video. Look at that. 
you know, if you've you got one already, you know. Nice size. It's uh, 24 by 18 full color. You use a Sharpie. That's the best tool. Doesn't matter what color, but a black or dark blue Sharpie to draw on those, and you can plot storms. I mean, obviously, Arthur is going to be checked off the list. Some of you already have one of these maps. You can order one. They're only $20, including shipping and tax. Flat rate, 20 bucks. I'll send it to you as soon as I get back. Actually, I mailed six of them today. Went to the post office. I used the kiosk. Sent them out. So those of you that ordered recently, you'll receive them this week. And we're probably going to have a very busy June, but we'll talk about that tomorrow. Anyhow, I'll put the link to these maps in the description of today's video. I want to thank all of our patrons on Patreon, our crowdfunding group, now approaching 260 people. On Patreon, we also have our longtime Hurricane Track Insider supporters, our crowdfunding partners there, for helping to make all of this possible. I really appreciate it. And you are who I work for, as well as the general public, to help get this information out. It's all good. And as always, I appreciate you tuning in. I'm going to finish this up so that I can finish packing up and make my way to the Outer Banks. I am Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. As always, thank you so much for your time and attention. I'll talk to you more as I travel and do my thing on the North Carolina Outer Banks.